I'm excited because ever since Magnezone came out, I was like, this card looks cool. I want to play it. And then I think it was, was it Charlotte Regionals where a bunch of people played it, but no one made day two with it? That's uh, that that's, uh, sounds about right. I know it, it was uh, similar in Malmo as well, where a bunch of people played it, but it took a few day two spots, but uh, none of them really made it all the way through to the to the very end, and the final ended up being just a Zorox. Yeah, well, Leonardo's looking to change the stigma on this deck and yeah. doing really well with it here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, I, I believe in him. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure he can do it. So, and it looks like uh, Leonardo will be going first and he will be starting things off oh, with... Oh, look at that animation. <laughs> yeah, so starting things off with a Dustman, Necrozma in the active and a Magnemite on the bench. So that's a really good start already. Yeah, and a Cynthia as well. And looking at the records, both these players are five, one and one. So technically, this is a win in it because they could just ID next round. But they're right on the cusp. Yeah, they're right on the cusp. So both of these players are going to be absolutely itching to make sure that they one of them wins and that this game doesn't end up a tie. Yeah, one thing I want to look for is the field blower count. So it, uh, I do believe I can find it here. There's three. There's three, all right, okay. All right, that's what Leonardo needs against Pablo because Pablo is like, all right, here playing Magnezone, I need this Garbotoxin active right now. Yes, and uh, absolutely, Leonardo finding his fuel blows will be the key to him being able to take the advantage in this matchup and uh, actually be able to run through Pablo's, Pablo's side, whilst also making sure that he doesn't play too many items. Of course, uh, this is the problem when you're, you're up against ability lock, you're normally more reliant on other means of powering through your deck more quickly, and then that just fuels Trash Lanch. Yeah, Trash Lanch, uh, just such a scary attack, especially later on in the game. Thankfully for Leonardo, a lot of his metal Pokemon are resistant to Psychic, so early game might not be that good. It just yeah. depends how his draw goes. Yeah, and uh, that will be one saving grace for him, and that he essentially he can get away with playing one more item than perhaps against other decks because of uh, that resistance that he has. Now, it looks like Leonardo didn't do that much after the Cynthia, just uh, pretty much passing afterwards, and now Pablo will take his turn. Let's be playing an Ultra Ball discarding an Espeon GX and a Field Blower. Yeah, I think he Tapu Lele'd, but maybe his Bridget was prized. Oh, no, it's not. So he probably got, like, the Sycamore in his hand. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so off the Ultra Ball, it's like, well, what did he get off that? It's like, oh, an Eevee, okay. So I imagine if he has a Psychic Energy in his hand, he would quite like to, you know, use that uh, Energy Evolution ability and just sort of get out of the Espeon GX straight away. Maybe even try to use Psybeam to confuse the Dustman and the Crossman. It'll only do 10 damage, but still decent. Uh, yeah, well, when you confuse something with three retreat, it's kind of hard to get out of the active spot. Exactly. Now, that was a pretty good draw to Sycamore as well. He wasn't able to find a Psychic Genji, but he's got a uh, Trash Lanch Garboda in hand. He's got a double colorless too, so he can start powering things up and it's like going to put the float zone I, onto the active. I don't see a supporter for next turn, though. Oh, yeah, you're absolutely right. Oh, so that's that's not so good, actually. And it looks like his best option now, then, is just attach double colors and a choice man to the Tapu Lele and just announce Energy Drive. Yeah, Energy Drive will be able to bypass that resistant on Dustmane Necrozma GX dealing that 90 damage, but this is Leonardo's turn. If he can get Rare Candy, Magnezone, and three energy attached to the active, he could take a knockout before Pablo even gets a chance to put Garbo to Garbotoxin in play. Yeah, and that's exactly how he'll be able to take the advantage in this game if he's able to do that. Now, he has got a bit of a decision here. He's got the Magneton in his hand, which he, he could oh. opt to put maybe play, but no, he's going to no, go for the you, risk. You got to go for yeah. it. You're here, 5-1-1. One win essentially locks up your day two. You're going for that turn two Magnezone. Yeah, I could not agree more. And he's uh, he's clearly agreed as well because uh, he is going for the end and he is just looking for Rare Candy, Magnezone, Energy. That's it. Thankfully for Pablo, though, he's like, oh, thank goodness he end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah no, that's the other thing as well. It has worked out quite nicely for Pablo in that sense that he will now will be able to see a fresh hand, hopefully for him, one of the supporters, so he's able to do more drawing next turn. But let's have a look here. What does Leonardo get? This Drum. is an important six cards. Drum roll, please. <laughs> oh, Professor's Letter. 
could be a good sign. That, Maybe get some energy to Ultra Ball away and then Mount Coronet, put him back in your hand. <laughs> that, that, that's a really, that's would be absolutely amazing. Mount Coronet is actually one of my favorite cards in this entire archetype. So it's such a strong stadium card. We, we haven't really seen anything like it, too. No. I think, what, like Power Tree was like <laughs> something close to it where you just get an energy, put it in your hand. But just the ability to get two metal energy from your discard. And so, uh, yeah, that's yeah. pretty good. Not only that, but with Power Tree, there was a restriction on it where if you had any special energy on any of your, on your discard pile, you couldn't even use it. This just lets you get back metal energy, two metal energy whenever you want. And it doesn't matter if you've got special energy in discard, you can still use it. It's an absolutely insanely strong stadium, but... Oh, it looks ooh. like the Ultra Ball gets the Magnemite. Does not signal that he has that Magna Zone rare candy this turn. No, but but even then, still using the Professor's Letter to get the two Metal Energy and then you know, using the Ultra to discard them is still fine because he can use that Mount Coronet later. Oh, and he can use Radiant Star. Yes, he can. Sogaleo Prism Star gets that two energy from his discard that he just discarded, attach it to a fresh Dusk Main Necrozma. Yeah. yeah, I don't know about you, Jeremy, but to me, I think the Solgaleo Prism Star is hands down the best Prism Star card in Ultra Prism for like what it enables you to do in terms of turns like this and the amount of energy acceleration it offers you is absolutely ridiculous. Oh, yeah, it, it's insane, and I don't think there's any card that even comes close. Uh, none of the cards are even played except for this Sogaleo. No, exactly. I mean, the Lunala Prism Star does do the same thing, but there's been nothing like good enough to pair it with to want to attach those psychic energies. So by that virtue alone, the Sogaleo ends up winning out there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, an absolutely insane card. Now, we're back to Pablo Cerny. He has a Tapu Lele GX, that's, uh, off, so you obviously drew that off of Leonardo Zen, so that's good for him. And there will be the Wonder Tag for... Is that Cynthia? Yeah. Okay, so... And choosing not to evolve the Trubbish into that Trash Lanch Garboder because, you know, that's not very good until later in the game. No. Garbotoxin is what you need. Yeah, he absolutely recognizes the importance of getting that Garbotoxin Garboder out as quickly as possible, especially since Leonardo wasn't able to find the Magna Zone during his turn two. So Pablo could potentially lock out Leonardo from being able to do his, ability, his uh, acceleration ability at all before... And there is an Ultra Ball... Yeah, Ultra Ball could get that Garbotoxin online. He would have to discard a few resources to do it. But it's surely it's worth it at this point, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. So I think it's just, the, it's just a matter of deciding what the best thing to discard is. He does have both a Sycamore and an N, so he could decide to keep both of those and then just decide what the best supporter out of those two is to play next turn when Leonardo's done his stuff. And it looks like that's what he's going to go for. Or maybe oh. not. So it's awkward because Guzma is such a powerful card right now with the 90 damage on that Dustman on the bench. And especially if he, uh, Leonardo gets the Magnazone, it's also a card they're like, well, I need to buy a couple turns. All right, I'll bring up Magnazone and then maybe like divide GX some other cards. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that's and that's another thing that's important to mention as well. Divide GX is something that uh, Leonardo always has to be aware of because it is something that can just sort of come in out of nowhere at one point and just take some unexpected KO or something to the bench and then potentially leave Leonardo with nothing. So it's, it's something that yeah, Leonardo just needs to be thinking of in the back of his mind. Yeah, uh, Pokemon is a game where you usually try to think like two or three turns ahead. And if you don't, you're going to have a real bad time. Yeah, you are, absolutely. So speaking of uh, Guzma, there is one from Leonardo's side. So he will be bringing up the Trubbish onto the bench, obviously fearing a future Trash Lanch. And uh, are we going to just see a another... Oh, no, he's actually so he's just using it as a means of buying himself some time, maybe going to go for another Radiant Star or, or even just pass. Wow, this ability lock is really hurting Leonardo right now. Can't really see what's in his hand, but anytime you just Guzma and pass, it's never really what you want to see. No, that's definitely not a good sign in the slightest. And uh, Pablo does, he's played a Sycamore. Does that, he's not seen anything too impactful off of that. I've seen some more energy, is always nice, of course, but nothing really that's going to sort of further cement his uh, position in a really, really strong way. Just it'd be interesting to see what he actually goes for in terms of attacks this turn. The float stone's obviously pr pretty important because that means he can actually can attack with something. But what's even the best attacker to go for here? Uh, honestly, Divide GX seems super strong right now. Uh, you can either have the option of taking out a Magnemite and getting around that ability to protect it on the bench, I believe, right? Just prevents damage. Yeah. Uh, or you can even just put all 10 on that Dusk main and take the knockout there. But that's also something you want to watch out for because then it turns on Sun's Eclipse GX. 
Yes, it does, which of course mean it's a attack. So it does mean a Christmas GX attack, which is does. Uh, how much damage does it do exactly? Is it two hundred and fifty damage? So two hundred and fifty, which will knock out absolutely anything in Pablo's deck. But it does actually look like that's the option. Yeah, he's just doing all ten there, taking the knockout, figuring well. I can either knock out the Magnemite or knock out this. Knocking out this seems a lot better. Yeah, and and uh, the only thing here is, like, like we already mentioned now, he does have to worry about the Sun's Eclipse because uh, that does mean Necrozma on the bench is only one energy away from being able to do that. It's, of course, uh, one takes one energy less than Meteor Tempest, which is normally... It, it's it's always one of the, the attacks you want to do in order to take your six prizes, especially because normally these stage two decks tend to fall behind anyway. But uh, it looks like it even... Yeah, might looking at his hand, that is not... Good. There's no energy in the discard. Mount Coronet is useless right now. Bridget, not very good. No. Uh, there is actually one energy in the discard pile because there was one on the dust oh, main. Oh, that is right. Which, yeah. got, which got KO'd. But even then, one is not like really... You, you can't get the Sogalio Prism Star out of the active, yeah. so uh, you're going to Radiant Star it anyway. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, so that's really Leonardo's biggest issue right now, is how do I move this really bulky Sogaleo out of the active so I can bring up the Dustman of Crows and actually get an attack? Ultra Ball getting the Remor Raid out, but again, under that Garbotoxin lock, can't really do much. No, he's obviously more just doing this just to get it out of his deck, because drawing that for turn obviously doesn't help him at all, so he'd rather have it, have it out uh, and now with the rest of his hand, he it doesn't look like he's still going to do much. And nope, he just passes. Wow. And there you have it. This Garbotoxin putting in work. He could have gotten the Tapu Lele, but no. Nope. Doesn't work. No, no. He, 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 I mean, he could bench it. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't do anything, but he, he could do that. And um, that's happened many a times in tournaments, I'm sure, where people have been, you know, taps. The sort of slip of the mind and didn't realize that the Garbatoxin was active. And then, sure, oh, uh, well, I guess that type of melee is. This. Oh! Kuzma on the Dusk Main Necrozma on the bench with two energy. And Pablo looks like he might attack with the Tapu Lele. Probably the best option, dealing the most damage. But bringing up that Garb Garboder, just because it has that float zone with free retreat. Yeah, absolutely the best option for Pablo right now, given that he, the, I mean, the Espeon is kind of a little bit spent at this point, and uh, even even if it wasn't, I mean, he could do Psychic with it, but then, of course, Psychic doesn't ignore uh, Dust Mane Crossbow's resistance. Tapu Lele does, and the Tapu Lele has a choice band on. Yeah. Uh, you could go for that side beam. Just have him flip a bunch of tails with confusion. Yeah, that is true as well, especially given that we know that Leonardo doesn't have too many retreating options to work with right now. But it does look like the Tapu Lele is the option that Pablo's going to go with. And there's the energy drive. And it's such a great option. A uh, quick two hit, especially if he doesn't get that energy, which we know he actually does have access to Mount Coronet. Yeah, but of course, Pablo couldn't have predicted that from the basis of what Leonardo did before. So now... So, yeah, now at this point, uh, Leonardo will play the Mount Coronet. We'll be able to use it to get back the Metal Energy. And he will be able to use Sun's Eclipse GX for the knockout on the Tapu Lele. But then Pablo just carries him back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's because uh, he has... Well, he, he just well, he'll have the three energies, so he'll do 130 with Espeon GX. Exactly, so, and that will definitely be enough to pick up the two-hit knockout. Oh, ooh, actually, Leonardo sees a Skylar. So, yeah. It'll be so it's not as good because he'll have to get a supporter with it. No. Because uh, uh, if he had an artillery in play, then he could get field blower instead, and obviously use a bit of hand. But that's not the case, so gonna have to just Skylar for another supporter instead. But even then, that's better than nothing, right? Oh yeah, he'll still hopefully be set up for next turn, but he's gonna have to to fight this Espeon GX that will take the return KO. Yeah, and uh, I think the important thing for him is that with the Sycamore in hand, he will be more likely to be able to do that because he can then play it, perhaps see a rare candy magnet and field blower, and all of a sudden he can actually get the KO on the Espeon. There's the energy, and we will see a Sun's Eclipse GX taking the knockout. 250 damage. Uh, absolutely obscene. And, uh, yeah, two prizes from Leonardo's side as uh, Pablo just promotes the Garbodor and now just needs to decide what he wants to do before attacking. I think that's the thing that's unfair about Garbodor decks is they just always have a free retreater to promote. Like, I'm always going to have Floatstone in play. What are you going to do?
Yeah, and that's it, exactly why sometimes where you know you into force that awkward spot where you have to attach a choice band to a Garboda, for example, just because you really need shot of abilities, then that's what is something that the really, really good players will prey on. Maybe use maybe a Guzma to bring up that choice band to Garboda and actually just run the opponent out of cards and uh, sneak a, get a sneaky win that way. A good old corner tactic. <laughs> Indeed. So there goes the Psychic Engine onto the Tapu Lele, onto the bench. Up comes the Espeon, and yeah, we're just going to see a Psychic for the knockout here, I presume. All right. Two Duskmane Necrozma down. One to go for Pablo here to take game one and move even closer to day two. Indeed. And now this is going to be the big turn for Leonardo. He does decide to bring up the Sogaleo Prism Star. Kind of tells me he maybe doesn't have much to work with right now. He has got a Rescue Stretcher. He actually had the Rare Candy Ultra Ball in his hand as well. But, of course, it got End Away. No, it's oh, no, in his hand oh, right it is in, it is in Okay. But, yeah, but, but what happened to his Sycamore? Uh, he got a Cynthia instead. Oh, he got Cynthia yeah. instead. Okay, right. So, yeah, there goes the Rescue Stretcher then. Uh, he's going to be shuffling in a couple of his uh, Dustman Necrozmas. So, he's going to probably just try playing out as much of his hand as possible after doing this. And then, yeah, just go for the Cynthia, hoping to see that, that you know, wonderful combo of uh, Field Blower. Plus, he, he needed, how many energy would he need? He needed quite a lot. Uh, yeah, so, well, he has the Mount Coronet. He so does. Two. That's uh, he hasn't part of the right. way there already. But he needs four total. So I don't he could do maybe field blower play, get rid of the float stone and then his own mount cornet after using it, play another mount cornet. Yeah, that that that's that's a possibility. Uh it's But remember he also needs a way to retreat the Sogalio out of the active. Yeah, that's the other problem for him as well. This is gonna be I don't can he even do it off of six cards. I'm not sure if like mathematically that's actually viable or not. He's got one metal energy and he's got an energy retrieval actually but no magnezone to go with that rare candy in his hand no very very unfortunate almost there but not quite that's i think pablo might have this now i think yeah. on the basis of that miss yeah he, he can go to the radiant star at least so that's uh you know not 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 the worst turn but you know now pablo could just take two quick very quick knockouts and at that point i'm not sure if leonardo can take Two, uh, two prize knockouts quickly enough to seal out the game. Yeah, I also wonder how many items Leonardo has played this game because that Trash Lance Garboder is looming on the bench with that energy. Just put me in, coach. Put yeah. me in. <laughs> yeah, put me in and just let me sweep through the rest of my opponent's field. Now there goes down another Trubbish, it looks like, onto Pablo's bench. Just just in case the, the one Trash Lance wasn't enough. And uh, then it looks like it's going to be a... a just uh, just a just a psychic, so just an attack. Yeah, so that so Galio Prism Star tanking a little bit thanks to its 160 HP and psychic resistance. Yeah, it's uh, really cool that it's you know it's uh, and it only Ooh, gives up one prize as well. Oh, more. big big find for Leonardo. Now he can really get the ball rolling. Not only that, but don't forget that Magneton is out now, so he doesn't even need rare candy. He just needs to find the Magneton, and he will be able to attach as many energies as he likes. Does he have it though? It looks like he has an N. Oh no, Skyla. Skyla. He does have an N too. He does, but um, Skyla will do it because absolutely he just finds either a, a. I believe he's playing Heavy Ball, right? He, uh, or, well, he's playing Ultra Ball in any case, so he just finds that and then. But you have to think about it. If he's forced to get like an Ultra Ball, that's another item. Maybe he has to discard a few items in his hand as well. And again, just once you reach that number. You, there's no going back. No, absolutely not. And that's going to be the potentially tricky thing for him to circumnavigate. Meanwhile, he does actually opt to put for the N instead of the Skylar, maybe thinking to himself, if I find a Magnezone, then all I need, well, that's everything I need, because then I can just get two energy back with Mount Coronet, attach them to Solgaleo, and just manually retreat. Or I can hit a Float Stone. Yeah, we'll see. He does draw four cards compared to Pablo's two. And this is... Oh, <laughs> double N off Pablo's two from the N. Very, very, very interesting there. The oh, he's got. I, I think that was a Magnemite, not a Magnezone. Oh, misses the Magnezone again. Yeah. Wow. And I think we just see another pass. It's gonna have to be. Gosh, that's really not ideal. And yeah, he did. He did indeed just pass. And uh, but Pablo just played an N straight away. Yeah, so the one thing about this Espeon Garboder deck is since you're not playing consistency cards like Octillery, like Orangru, and like Zorark, you really 
just kind of get punished by these late game ends, especially if you have that ability to lock up. Yeah, yeah, you absolutely do. So, and that's pretty much what we're seeing, what we're seeing here, kind of. But I think in the end, Pablo still has enough to see him through the rest of this. Well, and looking at that hand, there is the Magna Zone and a Professor's Letter as well. That's pretty ideal. And uh, now, yeah, Pablo wasn't able to find another tool, was he? No, I don't think so. So, is this going to be a retreat? Actually, into the trash lunch. Well, this is smart because Dust Mane's really good at knocking out GX and EX yeah. Pokemon. It's not so good knocking out one prize attackers. Yeah, if you're it's discarding free energy to really, you know, do way too much damage more than you need to KO one prize attacker, that's uh, mathematically that's not going to work out well for you. So, absolutely, that was, uh, it was, a, it was a definitely the right, right decision there from Pablo. But in terms of what Leonardo does, and I think he even recognizes that. Promoting the Dustman Necrozma just doesn't make much sense right now. Just opts to bring out the Magnemite. Yeah, well, especially if he does have access to a Guzma. Which he will do from the Tapu Lele. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. So he'll be able to find a Guzma with that and be able to bring up the Espeon and knock out in one hit. Fantastic. Espeon, but at this point, I might even like... That Tapu Lele is looking pretty, pretty tasty to take out. Yeah, yeah, it is as well. I mean, that's... Uh, can. Especially, you know, the more energy that Leonardo ends up leaving on, that can uh, do more damage too. So that's, you know, it's... I mean, it's tricky either way, right? Because yeah. Pablo only has one more prize left to take. So there's lots of slim pickings that um, he can go for. He can even, Pablo could even just KO the Rem Raid, for example, and win that way. Yeah, looking at Pablo's hand, though, he does not have a Guzma. It's just double Cynthia Super Rod. Oh, dear. I mean, Cynthia is obviously better than nothing. At least he can still draw cards. But yeah, that's not that's not the game-winning combination he needs. Right, does Leonardo have? Oh yeah. Okay. There's the Guzma, bringing up the Espeon. I guess the the Psybeam would probably be the attack that he would try to go for, and that's really annoying to play around. Yeah. So bearing that in mind, he just uh, thinks if that the Espeon will be the most important thing to deal with straight away. And actually, he preemptively attaches an extra energy as well. This is quite clever, because this now means that if uh, Garbatoxin comes back online again, it'll take less time to charge up a second Meteor Tempest. Yeah, it, I, I would like it if you could get one more, because then you don't even need abilities. You're like, all right, fourth energy next turn, let's go. Yeah, and I'm sure he should be able to do that as well, surely, because uh, he has got that Mount Coronet out, and I don't believe that his discard oh, pile is empty. There oh. we go. Okay. Well, he has one in his hand anyway. So, yeah, that is very, very smart from Leonardo. So he will be able to yeah, use Meteor Tempest, discard free energy, and uh, two more prizes for him. Can Pablo find his last prize to seal at the game? Choice band. Now the question is, how many items are in the discard for Leonardo? Yeah, and I think they're going to do a quick count now. I mean, to me, the fact that Pablo's playing the Cynthia tells me not enough to get the KO just yet. But there's... I was going to say, maybe he could Field Blower some way, but there's actually no tools for yeah. Pablo to discard on Leonardo's side, so that's not an option either. Essentially, he's like, all right, I got this one prize attacker. Hope you don't draw a Guzma and a way to retreat. Yeah. In fact, could Pablo be considering Acid Spray here? Acid Spray plus a tool, although oh, he doesn't find a tool to reactivate Garbatoxin. That's unfortunate. Yeah, it, choosing to attach the choice band to the active. Yeah, it, absolutely. Because maybe he could have, if it was that double colorless, he could have maybe gone Acid Spray, then you know, put Garbatoxin back online, and all of a sudden Leonardo can't do Meteor Tempest again. Well, it's a little bit of a stretch. It, it, it is a bit of a stretch, but... You, you, you try to find any route to victory. Yeah, and... Uh, oh, actually, that's big as well. Him, uh, Pablo, finding the Parallel City, able to, you know, discard some of... Uh, actually, there's no GXs now left on Pablo's bench, so Leonardo cannot win next turn. Okay, that was that was the card he needed. Yeah, that, that was very, very important. If he wasn't able to win that turn with, with Garboda, then, yeah, he absolutely needed to get rid of that. So I believe it was a Tapu Lele on his own bench. So now a Guzma won't win Leonardo the game. And, yeah, he'll be able to deal damage. One, two, three, four, five, six. Not enough. So that's 150 minus 20, 130. Yes, indeed. But you know what is enough? Another one next turn. Yes, yes, it is, which is why I'm sure, although it's not, uh, you know, opt optimal efficiency in terms of uh, prizes to energy discard ratio, he will be wanting to take down that Trash Lanch Garbodor as quickly as possible. He does, Leonardo does get the Octillery finally in play. 
And looking at his hand, seems pretty good. It has that energy retrieval, but again... That's another item. It's just another item. And I think he would be what? No, this means that if Pablo gets uh, another choice ban, a Garboder, and a Guzma, he could take out a Lele. Yes, it does. Again, it's still stretching. It's a lot of <laughs> yeah. cards, yeah. but... Although, he wouldn't go for that anyway, because if uh, Pablo's able to do that, he has access to Guzma, he'll just bring up the Octillery. He only has one prize left. Yeah. Okay. So, so but I think that we learn, learn how to... you got a style on some people. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, that's true. And I think this is uh, learning how to recognizing that, you know, he doesn't create more of a threat for himself by for himself by playing that energy retrieval, which is why he's okay to do so. And it looks like he might be considering attacking with Magnazone. Yeah, I have to say, I do not know what Magnazone attack is. I, I believe it just does... Like 80? Eight, yeah, 80 and then switch. It's... Uh, Old Gyro Ball type effect? Yeah, a, a, lo a lot of Magnazones have attacks called Gyro Balls. I think uh, statistically that's a safe attack name to go with. Uh, Zap Cannon. Zap oh, okay, all that. <laughs> 130. <laughs> The perfect way to knock out a Garboder. Yep, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Could, uh, couldn't have said it better myself. I think uh, you're thinking of an older Magnazone. I think we were both were where th there was definitely an older Magnazone which had Gyro Ball. Like three of them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So yeah, and he's just going to manually retreat here, bring up that Magnazone, and use Zap Cannon. Yeah, with that Mount Coronet, he's able to, he has enough energy to do it. <laughs> and <laughs> that's going to be Zap Cannon for KO. Incredible. Perfect. All right, Zap Cannon. Now it's one to one prize, and Pablo does not draw much of anything. My goodness. His hand is energy and Pokemon, and that is the game because just manually retreat, Mount Coronet, attach more energy to Dustmane, take the knockout. And so Leonardo takes game one against Pablo Mesa. Wow, just trying to fight against this Garbotoxin lock. Finally breaks the lock, finally finds the Magnazone, and. Only a few attacks later, it's like, well, what are you going to do, man? Yeah, and not only that, but against, as someone as we already mentioned, an incredibly decorated player, Pablo, one of the best players in the, you know, in Mexico, probably... If probably in the game right yeah, now, honestly. Yeah, exactly. Like, incredibly accomplished, incredibly skilled, and uh, that's a really, really impressive uh, game one win. Yeah, one thing about Pablo, he definitely shows his, all his emotions on his face, and you can see he's just disappointed. He's like, I'm so close that game. One... Prize. And then you start getting in your head like, what could I have done differently? What am I doing? Like, let's try to plan this out. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, it just did, did not end up working out. So uh, Pablo's going to really want to try and not make a repeat of that and just uh, in game two, maybe just try and plan this out a bit differently. But even then, it, I mean, Pablo played it pretty very well. I mean, you yeah. know, there wasn't really... Like, it wasn't really that it came down to him you know, making some huge mistake which meant they cost him the game. They just both played really well, and Leonardo ended up managing to squeeze it just at the end. Well, it came down to that one play where he's debate Leonardo's debating between Skyla and the N. Yes, exactly. And, and chose to N, and Pablo just threw two N. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then he played one of them, but still didn't see much off of that either. So, yeah, very, very wise decision between those two from Leonardo's side. Now, he has got a mulligan for his first draw here. That we did see uh, Pablo's prizes, but nothing too bad. A mixture of supporters. One of each supporter, maybe an energy, and I think uh, Trash Lanch was in there. Yeah, so but he has play, does play two of each, so that's not too much of an issue. It'll be very interesting to see what Leonardo ends up prizing. He does, uh, he had a mulligan first, but uh, it looks like he's got a basic now, so we'll be able to take a look at, let's see what goes into the prizes. Artillery's not ideal, one man coronet is not great either, but it's enough of a spread of things where it's probably okay. I think no, it is just a 1-1 one, one artillery line oh, in his list. Okay. Uh, but if his opponent's going to have Garbotoxin active most of the game, then it doesn't matter too much. Yeah, so I guess it could be worse, essentially. And Starting that Eevee, though, Ooh. that's what Pablo wants to see. Yeah, and and, we're, and he's got a Tapu Lele GX ready to go as well, so we'll be able to use that Wonder Tag for... He actually will go for the Turn 1 Bridget this time. And he does have the Psychic in hand, along with a Trubbish Garbotoxin and a Floatstone. Unbelievable. That's an incredibly, incredibly strong start I from him. I also think there's like a Cynthia in his hand as well. Can't ask for much better than that. So Pablo will then be going for that Bridget and uh, looks like he's going to be getting two Trubbishes and an Eevee. Of course, uh, in the last game, he didn't have another supporter in hand, which is why he, uh, or at least not a draw supporter, which is why he opted to not go for the turn one Bridget. But given that he has one now, he's just able to get this incredibly strong start. And sure. there goes the Espion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Eevee with energy evolution, again, just legal ways to cheat the game. 
it, it's so good. It, yeah, it's just uh, it, able to, it, when you attach a basic energy to it, it can evolve to an evolution of like that same type. So attach a basic psychic, you can evolve to Espeon GX straight away. Even on turn one. <laughs> it's too good. And there we see a pass. What a turn from Pablo. With his hand being a floatstone, Garbotoxin, and a Sycamore. Pretty much, like, not much else you can ask for other than that. That's uh, absolutely brilliant. Like, I don't think he could have, like, picked a better hand, like, just picking his actual seven cards. I, I think you're probably right there. Uh, meanwhile, from Leonardo's side, his start is pretty decent as well. He has uh, got the turn one Bridget off of the Tapu Lele, so he'll be able to find himself a couple of Magnemites, maybe even get out that Solgaleo Prism Star, which was so useful to him last game, or either that or maybe a second Dustman in the Chrysma. Looks like he's opting just for two Magnemites, maybe? I didn't see the Solgaleo in his deck, so it might already be in his hand. It's, it's in his deck, it, yeah. Oh, it is, it is in his deck, okay. No, I know, I know it's not in the prizes, but I was saying I didn't, like, when he flicked through the deck, I didn't see it. So. Yeah, it was in there. Oh, it was in there, okay. I think he's just scared of a turn two Divide GX, kind of putting pressure on, like, the two Magnemite he gets, so getting three, making sure, like, I have to get this Magnus one out. Yeah, okay, that, that's, that makes a lot of sense then. So now he's actually, oh, he's actually filled up his bench entirely, so pretty much eschewing, uh, benching the, the, the Togaleo Prism Star at this point, thinking maybe he'll end up using it later on instead. But again, that absolutely perfect hand from Pablo, able to evolve to the Garbatoxin, attach the Float Stone, and then sick him all the rest away. And he gets the double colorless energy. <sighs> that is... Absolutely, as, as Ross Gilbert might say, absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> and he even has just amazing cards for next turn. Got yeah. another Alge Ball, could even get another Garbatoxin out. And has the Sycamore. Man, Pablo's putting on a clinic this yeah, game. Yeah, 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 putting on a clinic is exactly the right term for it. And he's actually just going straight away for the Divide GX. Uh, well, it'll be interesting to see where he chooses to spread out the damage. Ah, okay. So he's opting not to target down the Magnezones, thinking to himself, I don't really need to target them down when, you know, I've got Garbatoxin up. And actually, the math here is really, really clever. All right, I, I'm really bad at math, so okay. you've got to explain it okay. to me and all the viewers. Okay, so what he's done here is he's placed four inch to the Dustman of Krosmas and two onto the Tapu Lele. That means that all of them have 150 HP left, which is a number that, depending on how many energies attached to each of those, Espeon can then pick up the knockout. That is right. Yeah. With, with Psychic. So, and not only that, but uh, it means that six items plus Choice Band, or, well, actually, it would, be, it would be seven because of the resistance, would pick up the knockout as well. So it's actually really, really clever d damage placement from Pablo on this divide. All right, and I believe Leonardo played a Cynthia, really searching for that Rare Candy Magnuson, but also now needs a Fuel Blower. And a few more energy. Has the Rekini Magnusome, but no Field Blower. <laughs> no, but even, that, even so, the fact he's able to get out the Magnusome, Magnusome so much earlier is going to bode well for him. He even has the Skylar in his hand ready for next turn, so he can just you know crank out that Field Blower, but then he doesn't have any energy to follow up with, so <laughs> maybe that might not be the best idea. Missing that crucial energy cards. He does play 11 of them. Uh, a far cry from earlier on today <laughs> where there was 16. <laughs> that, 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 was, uh, that was really something. Uh, from Pablo's side, uh, we actually just see him play a Guzma, bringing up the damaged uh, Duskmane Necrozma GX, which already has two energy on it. Now, I'm not sure if he's able to pick up the KO just yet. Psychic won't be enough because it will only be doing 120 right now. Uh, or we, we rather 100 after resistance. But it's still potentially something chooses to get the second Espeon GX up with that Ultra Ball retreats and he will have access or he played the Guzma. Okay. Yes, so yeah, yeah, he did. Next turns for Sycamore. That's next turn. Yeah, and there is the Psychic, and yeah, unfortunately, because uh, Leonardo did not attach enough energy, not able to make use of that clever placement of damage with uh, working out with the maths uh, to be able to pick up the knockout, but still softening it up decently for a follow-up attack. Now, what can Leonardo do here? So his hand was kind of anemic. It was double Ultra Ball Skyla and a Magnezone, I believe, as well, to where he might just be forced to Skyla for a supporter for next turn and pass. Which is really, of course, not ideal in the slightest. Oh, not at all. Now, 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I see the Solgaleo Prism Star in the deck. I must have just completely glossed over it before. But it's fine. They're all metal Pokemon. It, yeah, yeah, it is. It's all, confusing. All, all, all the gray blends into each other. <laughs> And uh, exactly like you said, uh, Jeremy, he does indeed play the Skylar and just go for a Professor Sycamore. And he actually he drew a Bridget for turn as well, which is really not great either. Now, I think what I do here, if I'm uh, Leonardo, I'm thinking of just grabbing a Magneton, because I have the Magneton in hand anyway, so I can just, just evolve. why not? Yeah. Like evolve it up, and then just the next time I can play the Magneton and just go for the Sycamore. And yeah, that's exactly what he does. Yeah, unfortunately, the no energy means he's not going to attack for another turn. No, indeed, he's not. Although, given that he will have access to the Sycamore next turn, he should hopefully see enough energy to be able to do something. As long as he draws a Field Blower. As long as he draws a Field Blower, of course. Yeah, that, that's true as well. Especially, I guess, that the other problem for Leonardo is that this uh, this Dustman Encroachment in the active is not very long for this world. It is definitely going to be KO'd by this Espeon. And so he's only going to be left with one uh, Dustman of Charisma on the field after that. So ideally, he would also like to find a second. All right, Pablo, you can calm down a little bit. <laughs> you know. Gets a bunch of energy so he can charge up the Espeon again on the bench. Has access to Guzma, Cynthia, the next turn. Double Carlos in his hand. Man, he is drawing so well this game. He's drawing, uh, drawing absurdly well. But th th if you're Pablo, that's exactly what you want to see, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah. Uh, yeah that's... Uh, yeah, very, very good for him. And now, from Leonardo's side, he does not feel confident in uh, what he's going to draw at all. Just ends up promoting the Magnemite, and yeah, there he evolves the Magnezone and just plays the Sycamore. I think he drew a Cynthia for the turn as well, which is kind of, <laughs> yeah, yeah. kind of bad, but... Yeah. I mean, you can't predict that, though, can you? You've got to play as if you don't know what the top card, next card of your deck is, because you don't. So yeah. you, have to, uh, you have to assume the worst in, in that sense. All right, off those seven cards from Sycamore, did he actually get what he needed? Field Ooh, blower. Oh, that's big. But does he have the energy to follow it up with and actually he make needs, it? He needs a lot of energy. He too. does. Oh, B. He has a lot of energy. He has. <laughs> oh, he has two. B. He has a Mount Coronet. Well, there's two in the discard as well. Well, there you go. That's that, that's fantastic. Getting those energy cards. Yeah, 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 exactly. And and he's got a float stone too, so he doesn't even need to attach to the active to you know, retreat it. He's got it all. Yeah, that's all you need, man. <laughs> so would, would, are we just going to see a, a sun's eclipse, right? Yeah, yeah, it's got to be because you know you, you just then you preserve the energy for next turn too. Wow, <laughs> that, that was a pretty good sycamore from Leonardo right there. Yeah, it was. And actually, no, quite cleverly, he's going to go for the Meteor Tempest here because he knows there's another Espeon on Pablo's bench, so now that won't be doing as much damage to him. Yeah, well, essentially, the two biggest attackers Pablo has against him is cards that do more damage for the amount of energy you have attached. And you can always save that Sun's Eclipse for your next knockout if Pablo decides to knock out something this turn. Yeah, exa exactly. So actually really, really clever there from Pablo, who in response to a field blower of his own saying, nah, I don't want you getting back to energy every single turn. Get, get rid of that, that Mount Coronet, please. Actually, he didn't discard the Float Zone on the Magnemite with the field blower. He, oh, he didn't as well, did, did he? Maybe it, it, interesting. Maybe he's worried about another tool going on it, perhaps? Just looks like um, another metal Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And there's the replacement Floatstone on the Garboder, turning on Garbotoxin again. Yeah, so that's obviously pretty big as well. And he does have the double colors in his hand, so he was able to attach it to the Bench Espeon, and it will be able to do Psychic this turn. But And then Pablo will just follow that up with a Cynthia. Yeah, we actually see the Tauros GX in his hand before it got shuffled away. That's a card that is actually super powerful in this format just because against Zorark, they never really knock you out in one hit. But against a deck like this Dustman, the Krasma, they always knock you out in one hit. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they do. So uh, that's uh, something you got to sort of really be, be careful of. And uh, yeah, really here, Leonardo just wants to find a field blower next turn. That, that, that's it. He is, um, we're going to be really wanting to just recharge that Dustman, the Krasma, and it, just keep getting two prize knockout after two prize knockout. The saving grace for him is that because he was, he had the foresight to you know, not fall into that temptation using the lower cost GX attack to take the knockout, the Pablo was not able to knock out the Dustman Necrozma in, yep. Necrozma in turn. Pablo actually had it too, if he did. Yeah, because he had the choice band, which he would have needed. So very, very good. Now, ooh, there's a Cynthia, Ultra Ball, Energy Retrieval, but no Field Blower yet. 
Yeah, and energy retrieval, while good, getting back those metal energy in the discard, with Garbatoxin active, they're just useless right now in your hand, so might as well just try to draw it later with a field blower. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's uh, and it's better to keep the keep it as an item in your deck so that there's, your, there's more there's less for you to draw through instead of you know, preemptively getting back the energy because well then you're getting another item in your discard pile for potentially no benefit. So very clever to play the Cynthia first and, oh, and it looks like no field blower from Leonardo this turn. No, that's really unfortunate. Although he did ha does draw a rescue stretcher which is actually pretty good for him because he can now use that to get back the uh, Dustmane and the Crozma and now he will have a follow-up attacker when this uh, Dustmane and the active inevitably go down. Yeah, energy attachment for the turn on the bench. Dust main Necrozma and a pass. Now, how, what can Pablo do to capitalize on this? He's got the KO seal to that, so he doesn't need to worry about that. But he uh, Got the KO. Hopefully try to end his opponent. I don't think he has access to that, though. Only a Cynthia in his hand. But I, I would even think about saving some of the tools in his hand as well. Just in case another field blower comes down, then you're like, well, okay, well, I need this Garbatoxin next turn. Yeah, I mean, that's that's another thing that it's we ha something we haven't talked about too much, actually, but it's something important to mention at the highest levels of play. Sometimes it's not correct to play a supporter every single turn. Sometimes it makes more sense to just hold your cards and just wait until, you know, your opponent does something, which means that you need to use something which you already have. And instead of just, like, playing a supporter because you have one and you can only play one a turn and feel like you have to. Yeah, especially if your deck is fragile to end like Pablo's is. So that's the debate that's going through his head right now. It's like, okay, what do I need right now? And how can I get punished? Yeah, and that's exactly, those are the sorts of calculations we'll be making. But after considering all of that, he does decide it is worth it, and he does play to Cynthia. Yeah, attaching that choice band and the energy to the Tapu Lele on the bench. So with that now... Uh, Leonardo has to potentially be a bit more careful about how much energy he's committing because it, it's like you said before, Jeremy, all of Pablo's attackers punish the opponent based on how many how many uh, energy is uh, yeah, between uh, is on the opponent's Pokemon. So being able to you know, threaten that makes Leonardo have to think a little bit more about what, so he, what he wants to do with, with his own attachments. All right, so... It's on Leonardo now. He just has that Dust Main Necrozma and two Magnazone in play. I mean, looking through his discard too, he's played a lot of items. He has. He does have the Field Blower as well. That's a really, really important find. So uh, he's actually able to get more value out of it as well because, of course, he can discard that Choice Band on the bench Tapu Lele as well. And is that was that an energy retrieval he just played? It was. It was. So. That's so. That, that's it. He can actually now just go for the uh, the sun's eclipse, or the, uh, if he wants to, or he could try and dig for a fourth energy to get to discard it. But no, he just goes for the sun's eclipse. Well, this sets him up kind of perfectly because sun's eclipse, take the knockout, go down to two prizes, and then let's hope I can knock out your tapu yeah. early next turn. Yeah, and actually, not only that, thinking about it, I think he's realized at this point that now is the least least risky point in time to go for the Sun's Eclipse because there's a lot less on Pablo's side of the field that can actually threaten a knockout on the Dustman and the Krozma based on the energy, given the fact that this one doesn't have any damage on it already. It wasn't softened up by that Divide GX. All right, but here's that Choice Band coming down. Energy as well. Choice Band on the Garbotoxin. And then an end. So end to two. Garbotoxin active. He needs... To win the game, he needs a Guzma, a way to retreat, and energy. Yeah, it's it's a lot to ask for, especially given that he actually only uh, Leonardo only plays one float stone, and he's already been through it. So he would have to find maybe like a Pokemon with one retreat to bench and attach energy to that. Maybe it's a uh, yeah very very strong uh, combo from Pablo. And does Leonardo draw out of it? Is the question we need to ask ourselves. I he's. Not. I, I see a rare candy in his hand, and maybe like a dusk main. That's not what you want to see in the last few turns of the game. The professor's letter. Uh, but that's not going. That's not going to do it for him. He, he's going to play it just to get just to fin it out. He can use it to, yeah, actually just KO the uh, Garbatoxin, the, sorry, the Trash Lanch Garbodo if he wants to, but then something else comes in. Oh, 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 no, actually. Well, there's the Tapu Lele. But it only has one energy on it. Man, now it depends on what's in Pablo's hand. Yeah, it, it does. 
And oh, it's a parallel city and a Garbotoxin Garboder. Wow. So if he would have attacked, pa oh, he drew the energy. Uh, okay. <laughs> but that could have been a really, really risky but cool play if he had actually gone for that. Um, having said that, I mean, Paolo draws the energy, which is obviously good for him, but he hasn't quite sealed this yet. There's nine items in the discard, I believe, from what I counted. Yep, so that will be a knockout into the Magna Zone. Now, can Leonardo find the last pieces of the puzzle he needs? Field Blower and three energy. And it looks like the answer is no. All right, so now we're going to game three, but we're going to game three with five and a half minutes left. <laughs> yeah, that's really not ideal. This is exactly not the situation that these two wanted to find themselves in. You know, five minutes left on the clock and one game apiece. Yep. <laughs> And We've both players, remember, are at 5-1-1 one, one for their record today. A tie would not knock them out of the tournament, but that would mean they would have to win both of the next rounds. But uh, well, I mean one more round, right? Because this is round eight, so there's only one more. Oh, this is round eight. Yeah. So they <laughs> have to win one more round. Yes, yes, yeah, so, but it does put extra pressure on them because, you know, ideally, if uh, one of them is able to win now, they'd say, right, that's it. I can just, you know, ID my last round and then I'm done. I can uh, make it through to day two. This potentially puts a lot more pressure on both of them in going into round nine. Man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, we could see a quick Espeon GX divide. Could see even just a quick Magna Zone and a bunch of energy. It really depends. But if both players get that Bridget out turn one, then I think we're in for a long game. Yeah, absolutely. And if, it, and if this goes into a long game, this goes into a unended game, you know, because if both these decks set up, they're not going to be you know, powering through so quickly that they'll be able to finish in five minutes. That's not the nature of how these two decks operate. Looking at the presence for Pablo, both Espeon GX. He only plays the two. Oh my goodness. If this game, if this game could go on longer, that could have been potentially absolutely huge. Uh, it looks like uh, Leonardo just starts off with a mulligan though. I think this is probably the best hope for Pablo now is like, yeah, Mulligan, you can take more time. Like, yeah, yeah. Of course, he doesn't know that. No. I mean, wow. yeah, yeah, that could be potentially uh, very tumultuous if, because this now opens up another situation for Leonardo to win. If um, Pablo, Pablo doesn't have, uh, say, any other Pokemon, but he has a psychic energy, he might feel still still feel safe. So you think, oh, okay, I haven't got another bench, but I can just evolve to Espeon and I've got 200 HP. He won't be able to knock that out in one hit, but then he'll do that. See, he has no Espeons and then think, oh dear, I might actually just get donked here. All right, looking at the prizes for Leonardo, not too bad. We do have a field blower in there, but I don't think the game's going to go long enough to actually matter for that. No, he has prizes one of Magneton, but that's also something else which, uh, again, probably won't matter too much in the long run. So... It looks like... Turn one Skyla from Leonardo with a Tapu Lele start and... Oh no, an uh, Eevee start. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> could could this... Could uh, Clairvoyancy... Oh, oh no. Oh, yeah. Looking at his hand too, I think there's an N, but everything else is just not playable. There's a Psychic Energy. So we've had a few instances of accidental Clairvoyancy on the Latin American stream so far. <laughs> could this be happening again? Commentators curse everyone. Yeah, commentators curse. Absolutely, that's uh, that's the that's the right right term for it. And it could be even more punishing if Leonardo decides to attach an energy to the active Tapu Lele as well. Yeah, because then he's only one manual attachment to. Oh, okay. No, you can't do that. Oh, he drew Tapu Lele. It's fine, everyone. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> You can get off the edge of your seats now. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, just take it in a deep breath. Exhale. It's yeah. Uh, that's a little bit. That's a little bit anticlimactic. I'm I'm, I'm almost a bit sad. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> it would have been a fun finale. But no, it looks so. If this game goes the way we think it might, then yeah, it'll, it's probably going to end in a tie, folks. Yeah. Looks. Oh, yeah. Both Espeon are prized. Yep. That's uh, that's the truth of it. Sorry to say, Pablo. <laughs> Now, fail the search, but thankfully he does have that Tapu Lele. So he will be able to use that to grab himself. Bridget from the Wonder Tag, it, or, or another supporter if he wants to, but the Bridget is what he goes for. And yeah, able to fill up his bench nicely. So yeah, that, this, this game will pan out like a normal game. And because it's going to pan out like a normal game, it's not going to end. It's just off the Tauros, though, interestingly. Maybe thinking to himself that, you know, if I, 
I want to have something which my opponent's kind of scared of hitting, but the, the thing is, Taurus is really good effective against these decks which normally take two hit knockouts instead of one hit knockouts. So, and that's exactly the opposite of what Leonardo's deck is most of the time. Yeah, so looking at Leonardo's hand, I do see a rare candy. It'll be interesting to see if he has the Magnus one in play, because he remember, he did Skyla for an Ultra Ball, an Ultra Ball for that Magnemite. He did do that, didn't he? So... There it is. Because if there's enough, like, if he goes through fast enough, there could be enough time, but... Oh, no, he no. didn't have it. All right. Uh, so maybe he just thought to himself that he wanted to make sure he had enough Pokemon to... He maybe didn't want to risk you know, playing the end and then not drawing a Pokemon, so this guy, like, guarantees him the Ultra Ball for a Pokemon. Although he could still draw a Red Candy Magnezone off this. Red Candy Magnezone, couple energy. And that's a knockout on the Eevee. Let's see, does he get it? No, he does get Dustman in the Krosma. But not much else, maybe? Oh, a second Dustman in the Krosma, and just a pass. Yeah, his hand's not actually very good right now. He does have the Skyla next turn for a rare candy magnet zone, but no energy and just that lone energy retrieval. But wow. Oh. Guzma bringing up that Magnemite, taking the knockout with Horn Attack. Tauros GX coming in clutch right now. But I think it's a little too late. Yeah, it is too little too late. See, our timer has run out. We'll get confirmation if time was actually called. It was, and there we go. They just decide, yeah, it's not going to end. We're going to take the tie, and let's hope we win next round. Yeah, so, yeah, unfortunate for it to end that way. It was a, it was a really great series, actually, for the first two games. Really good, like, nice back and forth games. Really showing that both, both these decks have the metal to compete against each other. And uh, <laughs> Metals to against each other. That wasn't intentional, I swear. Uh. <laughs> I'm full of them today. So, uh, yeah, but no, really, really great to see these two decks and these two players go at it. And, uh,